Living with bipolar disorder feels like there's a giant magnifying glass being held over my feelings, especially when I'm not well. All of my emotions, the good and the bad, are amplified during an episode. One of the hardest emotions for me to manage when I'm symptomatic has always been anger. Anger is one of those symptoms that we aren't proud of, so most people don't talk about it. It's almost taboo, like hypersexuality or suicidal thoughts. Something I've learned is that there's a big difference between normal anger and bipolar anger. Appropriate or normal anger has a specific cause and a somewhat clear way to diffuse it. For example, I might get pissed at a stranger that cut me off in traffic. Once the stranger's gone, I'm not angry anymore. Bipolar anger, especially during an episode, has no clear reason and no clear way to diffuse it. For example, I might go from driver to driver being angry at everyone on the road for reasons that don't make a lot of sense to others in the car. I might start driving dangerously when I normally would never do that. Normal anger doesn't usually cause problems in my life. Bipolar anger scares the shit out of me. I'm talking about that burning, untethered, soul-sucking anger that just consumes my thoughts, where everything is a trigger and no one can reason with me. If some of this sounds familiar, you're in the right place. As you watch this video, try to remember that we have good and bad days just like everyone else. Not every episode of anger is attributed to mental illness. Anger also exists on a spectrum, just like bipolar disorder. There is everything from mild to wild. Getting to know your specific brand of bipolar disorder is a very important process that takes time. So experiencing anger is just part of being human, right? It's tied to that primitive yet crucial fight or flight response that we all have. Even infants express anger as one of their first notable emotions. When I enter fight or flight mode, I tend to react rather than respond. There isn't a whole lot of conscious thought going on. With bipolar anger, I'm not always sure what the threat or danger is. It feels like the entire world is a threat or a trigger. I might bounce from one target to another, misdirecting these magnified emotions. If I'm not sure what the danger is, then how can I know if I've fought it or escaped it? I'll come up with reasons to justify my anger in a desperate attempt to defend how I feel. The more desperate I get to explain how I feel, the more escalated my anger gets. When I feel horrible inside, I go on this mission to find reasons why. Sometimes I'll bounce around until I land on a very specific target. It's almost like, Eureka! I finally have something to be pissed off at. And then the obsessions start. I'll sit there and just marinate and in misery, letting these poisonous thoughts circulate and build up momentum. My heart rate increases, my head feels this stress pressure, and I start to shake. I feel like an angry volcano ready to erupt into a path of devastation. When I'm symptomatic, my thoughts get distorted. It's hard to pinpoint what's wrong. If my anger isn't based on something tangible or logical, it makes it harder, if not impossible, to find a solution. For many of us with bipolar disorder, anger is one of the most destructive forces in our lives, especially when it comes to our interactions with friends and family. Unchecked anger pushes people away from us. Many of the people I talk with describe feelings of loneliness or abandonment. I've pushed people away when I was angry manic. Then when the inevitable depressive crash comes, no one wants to be there for me. This in turn just reinforces and feeds the depression. It's all very, very connected. Now this might sound strange, but some of us are literally addicted to being pissed off. The biochemical rush that we get from an anger response is very similar to other excited moods. Our brain gets bathed in endorphins, whether we're pissed off or excited about something good. For those of us that don't have a lot of positive excitement in our lives, it's easy to seek that rush by being pissed off at something. I have to be really careful of this. When I'm not well, I'll go on a hunt for reasons until I find something to be pissed off at. I basically externalize my internal suffering. 
Once I have a target for my anger, I'll feed it and feed it until I lose my ability to control myself. Realizing this pattern is one thing. Doing something about it is another. For example, I used to slam doors or break something when I'd lose control of my anger. I know firsthand how distracting and satisfying this can be. If you take away the door or you have the discipline to not break something, there's even more anxiety because the outlet that we became accustomed to is now gone. The feelings get worse and not better at first when we make the right choice. This makes it harder for people to see the benefits of making the right choices. So now that I've talked a bit about bipolar anger, let's go over some management techniques. I already have a video that talks about 10 of them, but here's a couple more that weren't in the last video. So my first tip is to find an anger twin. Think about this. Why do people who quit smoking use gum or chew on straws? The success rate goes way up if you replace the unhealthy outlet with a similar healthy outlet. Anger is like misdirected energy. Physical outlets like going to the gym, running, or hitting a punching bag are like the chewing gum or straws of anger management. If you punch walls when you're angry, get some kind of punching bag and put it where it's easily accessible. If you break things, put a special trash can outside and break glass recyclables instead of dishes. If you yell and scream, get a special pillow that you can yell into to muffle the sound. Keep in mind that these strategies aren't going to feel as satisfying as the real thing. Just like chewing gum isn't the same as smoking a cigarette. If you expect these tools to quote, fix your anger, you're going to be met with some disappointment. You have to keep in mind that these just help take the edge off. If you can approach your anger management with an open mind, you're going to get so much further with it. My next tip is to have a three-dimensional strategy for approaching anger. Immediate, short-term, and long-term. Immediate strategies don't solve the problem, but they help give us a little control over the anger. Once we're in control, it's easier to find productive ways to combat the anger. Immediate strategies are things like stepping away from the situation, counting to 10, taking deep breaths, positive incantations, and distraction. I guess anxiety medications would be another perfect example of a short-term fix. Once the immediate strategies have helped you get some control, then we can move on to short-term strategies. These would be things like reflecting on the way we reacted, or identifying the source of the anger, or asking someone you trust if the anger was warranted. Long-term anger management strategies are the ones that take the most effort, but this is how we learn to cope with anger in a variety of situations. This involves learning your triggers, knowing your warning signs so you can catch it early, and even working with a therapist or a mindfulness coach. Most people will go for the immediate strategies. They'll walk away, pop a Xanax, and just deal with it later. I'm guilty of doing this myself, and it just creates a giant anger loop. If you struggle with your anger, spend a little bit of time and get that three-dimensional strategy going. So my last tip is to see if the anger corresponds with a bipolar episode. I typically don't get angry when I'm depressed or stable. I get angry when I'm manic or having a mixed episode. If you're getting angry regularly, look and see if there's other signs of mania. Have you been eating or sleeping normally? Did the agitation follow a hypomanic episode? Are you obsessing over a person, place, or thing? If so, a medication adjustment or supplement might make a huge difference. If you can treat the bipolar disorder first, a lot of other things just fall into place. Cyclic anger is absolutely one of them. Before I sign off today, I want to give a shout out and some special thanks to bipolar advocate and podcaster Gabe Howard for inspiring my video. Gabe has a very appropriately titled book called Mental Illness is an Asshole if you want to check it out. I'll include a link to Gabe's website in the video description. Thank you all so much for spending this time with me. Stay well, and I'll see you here soon for another Polar Warrior video. Mm -hmm.